In this video, we'll discuss helical pitch and field of view in CT. During helical scanning, the table moves continuously while the tube and detector array rotate around the patient. Perhaps the most obvious way for this to happen would be for the table to move at a rate consistent with the data acquisition. That is, if your detector array covers 100 millimeters, the table moving at 100 millimeters for each rotation, and then you would have a one-to-one -one ratio of data acquisition length in the z-axis to table movement length in the z-axis. This is the scenario when using a pitch factor of one. However, acquisition does not always occur in this way. Pitch is a parameter which we can manipulate, and it may be greater or lower than one depending on our needs. Pitch is defined as the z-axis table distance traveled during one full gantry rotation divided by the z-axis detector area coverage. A simple way to think of this is to interpret pitch as a measure of the table movement speed. And while speed is normally measured in kilometers per hour or meters per second, pitch is expressed in terms of z-axis table movement per one unit of detector area coverage. For example, if the table only moves 80 millimeters in one rotation, and the detector covers 100 millimeters of length in the z-axis, your pitch factor would be 0.8 because the table is moving slower relative to the rate of data acquisition in the z-axis. On the flip side, if your table moves 120 millimeters in one rotation and the detector only covers 100 millimeters of length in the z-axis, your pitch factor would be 1.2. The table is moving faster relative to the rate of z-axis detector coverage. So, if the pitch is higher, then functionally the table is moving faster. If the pitch is lower, then functionally the table is moving more slowly. In the first example with a pitch of 0.8, we are oversampling. This means that the edge of the collimation field in each rotation is overlapping with the previous rotation. And that means that we cover less z-axis body area in a longer amount of time, and we're increasing the dose to the patient. Now, this increase in dose may seem wasteful, but the trade-off is that we will have improved detail and less noise when scanning with the lower pitch. This may be used for imaging small structures where a high level of detail is required. For example, when imaging the small structures of the internal auditory canal. In the second example, with a pitch of 1.2, we are undersampling. This means that there is not an overlap, but instead there is a gap between the data from each adjacent rotation. This allows us to cover a greater length of z-axis body area in a shorter time and decreases the dose to the patient. However, again, the trade-off is a loss of image quality in this case to noise. The gaps are accounted for by interpolating from surrounding projection data so the undersampling in this case should be considered simply as just making do with less overall image signal than truly missing any data. When we have a higher pitch, we are just decreasing the signal to noise ratio. High pitch is used in studies where rapid acquisition is a high priority, like in CT angiography studies, or where lower radiation dose is a high priority, like low dose lung cancer screening. Field of view in CT is described in two ways, scan field of view and display field of view. Scan field of view refers to the area within the gantry in which data is acquired. Most scanners will have at least two options for scan field of view, typically using a small scan field of view of around 25 centimeters for head scans and a large scan field of view of 40 to 50 centimeters for body scans. With a smaller scan field of view, the beam is collimated to a smaller area and a smaller area of the detector is irradiated. With a large field of view, the collimation is open to the full size of the detector. This parameter is inherent to the scan at the time of acquisition. The display field of view refers to the field displayed in the image data, which may be smaller than the scan field of view. This parameter can be manipulated after data acquisition with additional reconstructions produced using a larger or smaller display field of view. For example, if the display field of view did not include all of the relevant anatomical information, a technologist may be asked to reconstruct images with a larger display field of view. 
and this is possible if the relevant data was included in the initial scan field of view. Similarly, a technologist may produce reconstructions with a smaller display field of view. For example, if you're producing a bone reconstruction of the lumbar spine from an abdominal scan, where it's not necessary to include the full abdomen in the display field of view, and you just want to include the spine. In this case, decreasing the display field of view would serve to magnify the image because we are displaying a smaller area of the body on the same size image matrix. In short, the scan field of view is defined at the time of the scan and refers to the total area in which data is acquired, whereas display field of view can be manipulated after the scan but can never be larger than the scan field of view because no data exists outside of the scan field of view. Some of the concepts in this video are tricky, but I really believe that anyone watching this can master these concepts as long as you approach them and understand them from the right angle. Make use of the closed captions, playback speed, and script down below, and feel free to work together and bounce ideas around in the comments. Keep up the hard work, and thanks for watching.